All right, let's uh, get started. First, uh, thank you very much for coming. Um, I'm also very happy to be here to uh, present, to attend this uh, summit, since Vancouver is the place where I uh, studied three years for my uh, graduate degree. So that is another excuse for me to attend this um, summit. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the challenges for hybrid cloud, OpenStack-based hybrid cloud deployment uh, in China, and the solutions that uh, we uh, come up to meet the challenges for deploying OpenStack-based hybrid cloud to enterprises and uh, cloud service providers in China. First, I'll quickly go over what is the reality of the cloud market in, in China, and the, the, um, what is the momentum, the growth trend uh, for uh, OpenStack-based cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, or public cloud in China, and uh, give you a brief introduction of uh, who we are, what we do, and uh, what is our positioning and uh, our business model, et cetera. And then I'll um, go over the uh, details of the challenges, the problems that we have to solve uh, when trying to deploy to help enterprise to, to go to a cloud, uh, OpenStack-based open cloud. <clears throat> And uh, then I'll go over the details, uh, what, we did, what we did, you know, what kind of solutions we provided and functionalities we add and uh, um, the pain points that we resolved uh, for the customers. And lastly, I'll go over um, a deployment case and tells you the background of the project, the customer, and our solutions. And if you have time, I'll, go, um, I'll do a quick live demo of our public uh, cloud service site um, here. All right. So this, this is a, a rough estimate of the cloud um, market share size estimation for China. You can see uh, US, of course, the, uh, the, the biggest market uh, uh, in the world, and uh, more than 50% uh, of the market share. And uh, China, you know, surprisingly, uh, the market share is in the lower single digit, uh, believe it or not, you know, um, as the uh, world second largest uh, economy, uh, its market share, the cloud, is uh, actually is, uh, really, uh, really uh, in its uh, infant state, you know, compared with the, the, the United States or the rest of the world, for that matter. And I have two slides of uh, some interesting data, uh, a report, uh, you know, a, a research done by IDC this year, uh, shows you the, uh, the cloud market, uh, the trend, the, the, uh, cloud management software uh, share estimation, et cetera. And this slide shows you some interesting um, data uh, uh, and their estimation for the cloud management software in China. So the inner circle shows you the current um, market share of VMware-based solution, uh, Microsoft Azure Service Pack, um, commercial OpenStack, and the community OpenStack release. So the dark blue is VMware, and the light blue is Microsoft, and the gray and uh, orange is the OpenStack. As you can see, so for the private cloud sector, VMware is dominant. It's more than three quarters of the market. And Microsoft is gaining a lot of momentum and traction, and it's uh, about uh, 13 seconds, uh, 13 percent. While OpenStack here, you know, the um, commercial version and the community uh, OpenStack is fairly small, so six percent. And uh, IDC, based on their estimate, based on their survey, and they estimate that uh, three years from now, OpenStack will be. Uh, almost 20% here. And uh, Microsoft also will increase their share, while VMware will be the biggest loser. And uh, uh, its market share will be from uh, three quarters to about 60%. And also the report looked at, the research looked at the cloud service market area, you know, the IDC uh, operators who want to uh, adopt a cloud transformation and started uh, from 
transform from providing the rack and space to cloud service. And the telco service providers, and there's some enterprises who you know, also would like to uh, provide um, community services, the, some vertical clouds, community clouds, those kind of things. So you can see here, currently, uh, VMware is uh, about 30% uh, th of the market. And uh, three years later, it will shrink to a quarter. And while the OpenStack market, so you can see first for this market, the gray is self-built, you know, because the, the, the cloud service provides usually, they have a lot of resources, they have the technology and the expertise, so they usually build. And the rest of them, they either use VMware or Microsoft or OpenStack. Again, in this sector, we see a huge increase three years later based on IDC report estimation from 6% to 26%. And there's another way of slice this data, excluding the first tier CSPs, like uh, Baidu, Alibaba, and the, uh, the AWS, et cetera. You can see the OpenStack market share will grow more, excluding the first tier CSPs. Now, there is another interesting piece of data, is uh, the user survey. The pinning of what kind of, which cloud service, which cloud management software, you know, uh, do you prefer? So when asked this question, 20% of, 20 uh, of the uh, respondents says it's a uh, commercial open stack. And almost, almost 30% said, uh, you know, committed open stack. So folks believe, oh, we, we have in-house IT resources and we can do it ourselves. And 30% uh, said we cloud, WMware still, WMware still has some uh, big mind share. And uh, about 20% of them select Azure, Microsoft Azure. So the observation or the conclusion is that you can see 50%, 50% of the uh, folks being asked this question choose OpenStack. And OpenStack actually has become the most important cloud technology in the Chinese cloud market. And who are the big players, the super users of the OpenStack technology in China? Similarly to what happened um, worldwide, there are financial institutions, financial service institutions, there are uh, auto manufacturers, uh, of course, the e-commerce companies, Suning and um, Jingdong, and, and a lot of internet companies like Signer, Ctrip, 36, uh, 360, uh, 360, NetEase, et cetera, and there are education institutions. Based on our, our feeling of the pulse of the market, of the enterprise market in China, we see a lot of CIOs and the CTOs, they already selected the cloud, the, the, their cloud platform technology. That's OpenStack. However, there are three major pain points for the enterprises, for some IDC uh, service providers who are transformed cloud. The three points, the three pain, major pain points is are a lack of cost-effective, stable, reliable cloud platform. Now with the, with the um, advent of uh, OpenStack, this pain point is, um, is not that big. And the, the second the, and the third pain points are the lack of DevOps resources. You know, cloud is different from a lot of people who say, hey, you know, um, uh, OpenStack will be the, you know, will be the, uh, the future Linux of, for cloud market, for cloud service platform. But I, I don't think that is very accurate because uh, after all, Linux is a piece of software, while OpenStack uh, provide is, is the um, integration engine. It, it, its end result, its end product is a service delivered to its users. So you'd have to have people maintaining, uh, fixing bugs, uh, maintaining the clouds, and delivering uh, services to end users on a 24 by 7 by 365 basis. So most enterprises and CSPs, IDC, especially IDC, um, uh, 
you know, operators, they don't have the DevOps resources. And uh, we are funded to solve these pain points. So the team of Cl Ketone Cloud um, come from the first public cloud builder and operator in China, the Grand Cloud. Our team has five years of experiences uh, building cloud platform scratch. And also we have four years public house operation experiences. So last year, we uh, secured VC funding from two renowned uh, VC firms in China, a China, bro China Broadband uh, Capital and Gobi Partners, and also we received strategic investment from Cisco Systems. And our positioning on the business model is that Ketone Cloud is a hosted hybrid cloud service provider. So this summarizes all what we do in terms of our product and services and in terms of our business model. So our product is OpenStack-based hybrid cloud. Hybrid cloud, I mean interconnected public and private cloud. To support this product, your, to support public cloud, you have to have billings, you have to have reportings, online payment, ch charges, those kind of bells and whistles that are needed for public cloud, for, for enterprise or for a CSP to provide, to provide public cloud services to their end users. And our service model is managed uh, cloud services. So that is our positioning and the business model. So now, what, what are the challenges? You know, what is hybrid cloud? What are the challenges of um, uh, OpenStack-based hybrid, uh, hybrid cloud deployment? Why? Why hybrid cloud? Um, of course. So the, the, the most common definition of hybrid cloud is interconnected pri public and private cloud. However, there are some other uh, the other types of hybrid cloud uh, definitions in China, quote unquote, the, the mixture of uh, uh, OpenStack, OpenStack uh, resource pool, resource cloud with uh, VMware, they call it hybrid cloud. Um, the mix of uh, OpenStack cloud with PowerVM or PowerVC, they also call it hybrid cloud. In a sense, they are hybrid cloud, you know, different cloud um, technologies. And also the uh, bare metal plus OpenStack Cloud. And oftentimes, when we deal with, when we work with uh, financial institutions, we found that uh, these customers, these enterprises, they have uh, all of them. They have bare metals. They have requirement um, for us to give they, they, to provide them with technology that can manage bare metal pools. They can manage VMware existing VMware investments. And also, they want us to, uh, to be able to manage their power of VM through power of VC. And, uh, and they don't want to put everything, all their eggs, into the uh, public cloud, especially in China and Asian Pacific countries. Because these guys are you know, worried about their sensitive data, their uh, critical uh, business applications to be you know, run on uh, uh, a public cloud you know, managed by uh, e-commerce. Uh, provided like Alibaba, especially, you know, I, I met a lot of uh, uh, CIOs and CTOs of the enterprises in China. They say, hey, I, I will never trust uh, the, the Ali's cloud in, in, in China. You know, that's the biggest public cloud service provider in China, not like AWS here. Uh, in the U.S., you know, a, a, AWS has been, you know, uh, have a lot of uh, um, certifications and uh, gaining a lot of momentum in the federal governments, uh, but not in China. All right, so what hybrid cloud deployment does uh, enterprise really know, really need? So number one, they need a, a very powerful, for public cloud, they, they need a very powerful user-friendly tenant self-service portal. So the current horizon provide a good foundation for that, but that is not enough. And oftentimes, some folks, they want, uh, they, they just use our, um, our engines. They build, they build their own portal, enterprises and CSPs. Um, the second one is for, for, for providing public cloud. You need to have uh, billings, reporting, as I said, and also you need a very competitive ICE or PaaS functions that you can compete with AWS, with other public clouds like uh, Ali Cloud or Tencent Clouds. 
That, that is, you need a powerful a cloud admin, a boss system, a business subsystem, or operation subsystem. And the, the other challenges is what I have just described. They need to manage multiple clouds, and they want us to provide an open stack that can manage the VMware pools, the Power VM pools, and also bare metals. These are the advanced functions that uh, OpenStack community release has not implemented yet. The auto scaling of VM numbers in a, in a elastic load balancer. The live scale up, increasing the CPU and memory of a virtual machine without rebooting it. Okay, we call it live vertical scale up. The rollback of a, of a VMs OS to any prior snapshot. To roll back, I mean roll back, of course. OpenStack provide the snapshot functionality for VM OS for volumes, but uh, developers, what they want is not just a snapshot. They want a capability to roll back their OS, their volume, to any prior snapshots that they have taken for their projects. On and on and on. I'll go over some of this. Uh, I have a quite a few slides describing. Uh, actually, these are the, the functions that we enhanced, we implemented on top of OpenStack. Based on the requirement, when we deploy OpenStack-based hybrid cloud to Chinese enterprises and the cloud service providers. All right. So this shows you the OpenStack as an integration engine for multiple cloud management. So now let's talk about what we did. This is the core. Everybody is very familiar. There are three tiers. The UI tier, which is Horizon, and some command line, um, command line interface, command line, to, uh, command line tools. And the middle layer is the Alexis services, you know, the, the Novas, Cinders, Swift, and Neutron, et cetera. And the third, the third tier is the shared services, the images, you know, the um, um, ID management, logging, orchestration, et cetera. As I said, number one, we need a very user-friendly, the cloud platform that gives you the taste of Amazon or other major public clouds. Public clouds. The functionality-wise, user experience, the whole nine yards. In addition, we need an admin portal, an engine that allows the cloud admin from a, a CSP, cloud service provider, or from enterprise to be able to manage that. Inclu that includes, of course, includes con con configuring the resources in the OpenStack, which part of the OpenStack admin uh, functionality has already in Horizon. But more, we, they need to manage their asset. They need to know the capacity utilization, the monitorings, the, um, the billings, the pricing modules, and all the bells and whistles that you need, especially for public cloud services. And they need, as I said, advanced ICE features that allows them to compete with private solutions from WeWare, with public cloud services, functionalities from AWS, Ali, or the rest of them. And lastly, they need billings, service package management, online charge and payment, account order management, et cetera, et cetera, to actually allow them to run their cloud services to their end users. And that is what we call Ketone Cloud. So what we do, we did a lot of addition. And some of the folks, uh, um, some of our competitors, what they do, they do subtraction. They don't even support the functionalities OpenStack already provided. And we support all the functionalities that OpenStack provide to our end user, and we add more to meet the challenges and requirements that they have. So this is another diagram that shows you what we did. The red ones are the OpenStack modules the keystones, the, the, the new projects, and you know, all the projects that provide the, the great 
functionalities. As I said, we need a tenant portal. We need an admin portal, the BSS and the OSS, and we need all the, the rest of the um, shared services that allows you to actually manage it, provide the services, be able to, you know, uh, gave the users the visibility of what, what is happening in their data center on the server. And you can see there, there are uh, uh, other factors that uh, we need to take into consideration to deploy hybrid cloud, OpenStack hybrid cloud to enterprises in China. I guess, I, I believe here in the States, it will be the same thing. Because oftentimes, enterprises, they already invest in clouds. Most of them, they, were probably, they, were had, they already have VMware you know, uh, implementations. And that is especially true for the financial, uh, uh, financial FSIs, financial service institutions. And uh, all of the uh, banks, insurance companies, and security companies we talked with, they have VMware, they have PowerVM, and they have bare metals that they want you to manage. Because oftentimes, some of the applications cannot run on virtual machines due to various reasons. While these virtual machines, while these bare metals has to be on the same network, or virtual or physical, as the other tiers of the application, the app tiers, the app tiers. So that presents the challenges for, you, for, for us to manage the bare metals and also put them on the same virtual subnet as the rest of the virtual machines. So we have to be able to manage the power VM pools, the VMware pools, the bare metal pools, and utilize the, um, all the existing uh, the same fiber channel same, uh, equipments from various vendors. If it's a new deployment, we found they just buy the commodity hardware, the servers. They don't, they don't have any of these, these troubles. All right. So this is a quick, uh, when, if I have time, well, I, when I have time, I'll show a live demo of this. Our, this is our horizon. You, ha you can see you know, the overview of your resources, the compute, the databases, networks. And this is the topology that we enhanced on top of, uh, basically, we, we built this um, tenant portal from scratch using the OpenStack APIs. And this shows you the virtual routers functionalities. You know, do, does it have a, a, a VPN gateway? And you know, does it have um, what kind of network is connected, et cetera? Now, there are some details of what we really did. So this shows you the functions that these OpenStack project, project modules have, you know, for NOAA, Glance, Sander, Swift. And the comparisons of the releases from the community. The, and the solutions from Red Hat, Mirantis, IBM, and HB. And I also com compared it with the public, the leading public cloud service providers in China, Qing Cloud and Ali Yun. You can clearly see what we did. First, Roll back a VM, as I said, to any snap, prior snapshot. Auto-scaling the, the, the number of VMs in your elastic load balancer. Live scale up of VM. That is a, a, actually a requirement from a, a financial service institution. They said, hey, I don't want to stop my application. I want to add CPUs and um, uh, memories on the fly without shutting down the VM, their application. Resource recycle being resetting password, et cetera, et cetera. These are all the features that we added on top of OpenStack. For Glance, we added bring your own image. That is, you can create an image from your application in a physical server or on another cloud, and you can just upload it to our OpenStack cloud, and that cloud will become a your own cloud, your system, kind of a system cloud, and you can use it to create virtual machines. And that is really facilitated and speed up your cloud migration from, from either VMware or CloudStack or other public cloud to your own private cloud. 
in the neutron part, what we did, we added a lot of interconnectabilities. OpenStack support IPsec, VPN, side to side, out of box. It has all the other good stuff, you know, electric IPs for ELB, for virtual router, firewalls for, for uh, V routers. What we add, we add GRE tunneling, L3 GRE tunneling. We added a host uh, client to cloud, uh, client to site VPN services over PPTP and uh, over v OpenVPN. And also we added managing bare metal. The key here is on the same virtual network as the virtual machines. That's what we did. All right. To summarize, we did a lot of work enhance the VM functions, the auto scalings, the live scale ups, etc. And this is a auto scaling. With heat, you can actually scale the number of VMs in the ELB group, like that, in a single cloud. So you can come up with a policy to increase the number of VMs based on the CPU, the memories, or any variables, any parameters that you can monitor. And you can decrease this also by setting up some of the triggers. <clears throat> okay. And this, sh this shows you the monitoring of one ELB. It shows you the seesaw of the CPUs of this ELB group when you create, uh, or when you e increase or decrease the number of VMs. And this shows you, the, this is diagram of the live scale up. You can, on the fly, without shutting down the VM or your applications, and you can increase the, your, your, v, your CPUs and memories. Rollback of virtual machines OS snapshot. Bring your own image, BYOI, which is critical. What we did here, actually, we added two APIs, two glance, import and export. So what we did here, actually, is, is we automated what the cloud admin did with their image store, and we gave, we implemented the user face, user, user, the user portal that allows the tenant to do what a cloud admin can do. So they can actually create an image and import. Basically, they can add any kind of uh, uh, images, system images, to, to our OpenStack cloud. This shows you a, this shows you a case where um, the user imported a DSL, damn small Linux, is only 50 megabyte. And th this shows you the, um, the virtual machines that are created using their imported uh, uh, DSL image. It's quite different from the flavors of the, other, of the uh, you know, Red Hat or, or Ubuntu of the um, virtual machines, you can see. Now the advanced SDN functionality that we added, you know, the L3 GRE tunneling, site to host uh, and um, uh, VPN services over OpenVPN and PPTP, the cloud bursting from one cloud to another. So this is the IPsec VPN that's supported by OpenStack out of box. And this is what we added, L3 GRE tunneling. Allows you to connect one cloud to another if that cloud support GRE VPN gateways. Cloud bursting, a lot of people talk about cloud bursting. So your private cloud has limited resources, have limited elasticity, and during peak time or promotion, you want to burst your applications to the public cloud, where you have, your, where you have a lot of capacity, resources, elasticity, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We actually um, implemented this with AWS. So we got an AWS account. We created a, a VPC with a subnet, and we connected these clouds through uh, IPsec, IPsec VPN uh, tunneling between these two clouds. And we set up uh, um, our cloud auto-scaling 
the ELB, now you have an extended ELB over the two clouds. And you can, you can scale out your VMs to the new ELB group in another cloud, in AWS. And uh, when the load goes down, you scale it back. You kill the VMs in AWS first. Scale back your application to your own cloud. That is, we call it cloud bursting, cross-cloud auto-scaling. And this figure shows you the VPN from host, host to site VPN services over PPTP and OpenVPN. So to summarize, we, we developed, we based on OpenStack, we developed, enhanced the, the platform so we can be deployed as a, pri a public cloud services for the CSPs, cloud service providers, IDC, you know, uh, SPs. And it's, it can also deploy it as a private cloud. And we can connect it with the site-to-site -site secure VPN services. And we also test, we also can connect to their um, customer office. Our third enhancement is uh, we prioritize our boss system, you know, our engine. So, so, so you have account management capabilities, IDC asset management, um, deployment, monitoring, online invoice, support, integrated support ticket, the, the bells and vessels that a service provider, a public service provider need to provide public services. And this shows you the boss system, the key engine. The pricing, okay, uh, I think I'm kind of short on time, so I'm going to speed up a little bit. The third improvement, what we did is we, we must be able to support the complex deployment environment in enterprises. As I said, they want you to connect their private cloud with public cloud. And they want you to manage bare metal, manage VM and pool, managing power EM. And we can do that because VMware, we center, open it up their API. We center 5.5, 5, 5, you know, open up all the API, RESTful APIs so you, from OpenStack. Actually, you can add a, a resource pool. So when the user say, I want to go to the VMware pool, you can direct the user to that VMware pool and create VMs in that VMware pool. You don't have to do with anything. You don't have to remove the vCenter, the resource management um, software for VMware pool. You just leave it there, and you can manage it. And that's the requirement. It's the same thing for Power VM, and we did that. I'll give you a couple of snapshots that shows you. So here, so when, when the user select image, created their own, provision their virtual machine, you gave them a choice of the local resources using KVM or the VMware. So they shows you the images that are available on the VMware pool. We can do the same thing for Power VM. Most importantly, for bare metal, power VM, and, and, the VMware's, and the VMs in the VMware resources, we are able to, form, to put them on the same network, to, jo to, to allow them to join on the same subnet, the virtual network. I think I'll give a quick demo. I have five minutes. So, all right. This shows our key cloud. <clears throat> you can see you have the compute storage. It's a little different from what you see in the horizon. It shows you the network. So this is our, the virtual machine, the, the topology, shows you the virtual router, which is where it is on. This one has a virtual VPN gateways. It has a, virtual, it has a floating IP, a public IP. Uh, this, this is a SUSE instance, you know, shows you the image, the network it is on, et cetera. So overview shows all the resources, the recent activities. Compute shows the instance images, recycle bins. Recycle bins is the place where we store the resources you delete for two hours. And after that, it's permanently deleted. Nova has, have this API called soft delete. And it also has a force delete. Basically, if you deliver it by mistake, it will be here. The other place that you can see all your resources is here. Is a, is, a, is a network topology. It shows you what virtual routers you have, 
And what do you have on these water routers? Do they have a gateway? Do they have a floating IP? And this shows you the, your subnet, your virtual subnet, all the overlay virtual subnet for this tenant. And, the, the, and also the virtual machines on these subnets. All right. I'll do a quick showing of the, um, this is the ELB. And this ELB has two members. And I set up auto scaling on this ELB. I lost, ask the, you know, um, designate to add one VM when the CPU is greater than 90, and delete one when the CPU is below 75. And what you see here is you have this CISO um, CPU pattern. And that shows you, you know, the, the system auto skills, auto add and shrink the resource pools based on the load. Okay, a quick look at our engine, the cloud enemy engine, an enterprise or a CSP, they need this. They need to know what physical servers they are on, the CPU utilization on this server, and how many VMs on, on this server. They need to know the asset, right? The servers, the switches, the IDCs, what, what resources you have. The IP addresses, the, you know, all the information you need. And they need billings. So resource settings are what admin of the horizon already have. We added asset management, billing, support, and statistics. So this is a pricing engine. Shows first you can you can design your product, what product you want to charge. The images, you know, the bandwidth, the volumes, and then you can um, decide what kind of price you want to charge. You can change it here, and also you have a special prices for your promotion. And this will all write the um, this will all write the prices you set in in the in the normal engine. And last. But not least, it gives you the capability to see what is going on, the, the visibility of the resource utilization in your, in your resources, in your uh, data center. So this shows you the number, what are the, the number of paid VMs, um, the CPUs on these VMs, your daily charges, you know, the new users, the daily active users, and the, the flavors of the, your virtual machines, you know. And uh, user statistics, since we were the first public cloud service provider, so we know a CSP for a public cloud, you would, you would need this inf information, you know. Your paid subscribers, your um, registered users, consumption users, your daily active users, et cetera, et cetera. That's it. Thank you very much.